Hi everybody. In this tutorial, it was going to be more of a quick tip really. Um, I'm just going to show you um, how I make these kind of organic movements. Uh, I'll just show you this example video if you haven't already seen it. And what we're going to be doing is looking at the kind of the warping shape of that sphere in the background. Um, I came about this as I was using deformers to try and build something which was a, a little less regular. Um, when I model in Lightwave, there's um, there's a command called Jitter which lets you kind of move the points around uh, at random, um, and you can set, you know, kind of the distance for the the different axes. But there's not really a way of easily doing that in Cinema 4D um, without using deformers. So let's go ahead and I'll just show you how I built it. So first of all, just add a, a sphere. I'm just going to go into my grid shading with lines view and I'm going to up the subdivisions to let's say about 36 and I'm going to make it editable just by hitting the C key I'm going to go into it doesn't really matter if it's the side or the front view um, but I'm just going to enlarge my view just a little bit I'm actually going to just control click on these little dotted areas just to hide what I've got there because we're not going to use those tools um, and it gives me a little bit more leeway to play around. I'm going to go into edge mode and I'm just going to hit UL for loop select and I'm going to just shift click my way through these just leaving the top ones uh, I think the top two actually um, untouched. Now I'm just going to right click and I'm going to go down to bevel and I'm going to grab one of the handles and you can just see I'm interactively doing this I can lift up and down like so. Pretty pleased with that. Now if I go into polygon mode you can see that I have these selections already. Now I'm still in the bevel mode so I can just click and drag like so. Now what I really want to do is drag these right the way out. So what I'm going to do is a small bevel like so and now I'm going to go into my scale tool but I'm going to turn off the Y axis because I want these to be kind of slats almost kind of like disc shaped slats so if we look here you can see they kind of jut out um, but they're not thickened in the Y axis so they don't get any thicker than this so just turn off the Y axis there click and drag and I'm just going to do one more bevel or you could just do an extrude like so and the reason I've done that is it because I'm going to just drop that tool I'm going to drop it into a hypernerbs just by holding alt or option and there we go you can see we've got our basic shape now I'm pretty pleased with this as it is um, but what I want to do is have this kind of undulating um, and the best way to do that is to add a, a displacer effector now I'm going to drop that into the sphere now you can drop this underneath the sphere like this or you can keep it separate if you have lots of different kind of more complicated hierarchy and you could just grab all of them hit alt G and drop them all into a null I'm just going to put the displacer at the top under the null and what I'm going to do is just go to shading and I'm going to choose a noise shader now you can already see that this isn't quite right and the reason for that is the scale isn't right so I'm just going to give myself a bit more room like so I'm going to choose a different kind of noise as well I'm going to choose stuple and I'm going to increase the size probably a bit more than that I think it's around 700 ish I went for like so now I think this is probably going to be about right now animation speed I'm just going to knock that to one for now uh, and if I drag if I hold down the J key and drag in the viewport you can see the effect of slide that's basically dragging across the time slider uh, reasonably happy with that but I think I might reduce the relative scale uh, in the y-axis and um, I'm going to go back to the displacer and in the object you can see we've got a height here we've also got a strength which we can change um, now I'm going to reduce that height just a little bit and I'm going to change the direction to spherical now if I just click and drag again we can see 
probably want to increase that height again. Maybe not quite that much. Okay, I think that's getting pretty good. Uh, and it really is just as simple as that. It's just about tinkering and changing the settings and just kind of experimenting with the, the speeds. Um, and that's all I did. It was really that simple. Um, I showed someone this the other day and they wanted to know how I did it, um, how I made the, the kind of the warping shape there. Uh, and it was just like that. Um, let's just reduce the amount of subdivisions we've got going on here. We don't need quite so many. Uh, make that a child of the sphere has a slightly different effect to having it in the hierarchy as well um, and we might decide that we actually go back to the vertex normal uh, in fact this is the way I had the hierarchy for the example I showed you in the video um, and then to texture this let's just bring back what we've got going on here now I'll just show you how I created this this material is actually a really simple material um, but there you can see that there's some kind of noise on the surface which just jitters up the the, the smoothness a bit um, but the material was really simple uh, I think I started off with a red actually I had a Fresnel in there as well um, and the Fresnel was a dark red but just with a very small amount of this kind of magenta creeping in uh, possibly even darker than that but let's try that and a pretty bright red for the, the front face and this was also a fong which has a very different look and there was some reflection I think there's about 10 to 15 percent and also with a the Fresnel there which wasn't quite as shiny as that um, but the bump was a noise again that was a stuple noise and it wasn't quite so strong uh, although I think it's probably bigger than that just trying to go off memory here yeah that's probably about right uh, so that was all I did for the material and um, just dump that on there just by as it is and then lighting wise uh, I used I actually used where are we the um, studio tools pro one um, and I took three soft boxes um, from here so I'll just show you how they work uh, they're very similar to some of the other lighting tools you might have seen out there um, so the target automatically in the middle of the scene anyway um, but if you click on custom soft box you can change the light color and I think I had a, a whitish light above and I had a, a blue light like this which was kind of is a lot brighter than that actually and you can see that this is all connected to the target um, and you can change the radius and the decay which really gives you a kind of blown out highlight um, let's just give this a, a very quick bit of GI so you can see how I did it um, I'm just going to go for Uh, let's just go for a uh, visualization preview for now and we'll just up the anti-aliasing just a little bit and um, so let's just click and drag or command click and drag control click and drag whatever uh, to create a duplicate here we'll make this one a warm a peachy orange and it's just actually I'm pretty happy with that where it is um, I will bring it around the other side though possibly around the front a bit that's one thing I think maybe I would change with that original uh, this original example is maybe just a little bit more light from this warm light just around here um, And that's how I did it. I didn't have the lights showing in the scene, um, and the GI settings were, were much higher, much, much nicer than this. And in fact, I didn't do the final render, although it is a Cinema 4D render, I didn't do it in Cinema 4D. I did it using Cineware 
in After Effects. Um, and I added some of these particles you can see. Um, the, the background isn't a Cinema 4D background, that's just a, a four color gradient uh, on a background layer. Um, the noise that you can see, there's some kind of film grain and some chromatic aberration, um, some little lens effects in there, that's all added on an adjustment layer along with a little bit of color correction and curves um, in After Effects as well. And that was all rendered from the, the render queue in uh, cinema, yeah, in After Effects using the Cinema 4D engine uh, in the background and that let me add the text where I want, choose the colors I want, choose the timing of the text and only have to render the project once rather than rendering everything from Cinema 4D out then compositing everything afterwards. It let me just go in. So the speed of the, the kind of undulations on that sphere um, when I first did it they were way too fast and I didn't notice while I was building it in Cinema 4D, I thought it looked all right. Um, but once I got it into After Effects and I had all the particles and the text in there, I thought no, that's a bit too quick. And that meant that I hadn't wasted any render time. Um, I could just preview it and the timeline in After Effects and there we go. Um, so you can see now it's very, very, and it looks nasty, but um, that's how I did it. Um, this was hidden and uh, obviously the, the, the finished effect is much nicer. Um, but yeah, the whole point of this was really just a quick tip on how to build an undulating object of some kind. I quite like these kind of abstract things, lots of noises. I'm going to show you uh, in the next video how I do something fairly similar but using a, a plugin uh, which is based on a Houdini uh, plugin which is really good. Um, but anyway, for now Hope you have some fun with that. I'd love to see what you do with it if you do anything at all. And uh, I'll speak to you all soon. Thanks very much.